if you are a biotech fresher or an experienced candidate who wants to grow in the biotech pharma and the chemistry industry then it is very important for you to know the trends of the jobs now mostly everything is interconnected in this world so one thing goes down it will take down another thing while the third thing may go up okay so from last several years now we have been seeing a saturation in the molecular biology biochemistry microbiology wet lab jobs okay r and d jobs and the reason of stagnating r and d jobs was the investment because as a biotech company you have to invest a lot of money so that not only the jobs can be created but what is happening in 2025 is going to define rather i should say it is a defining moment for the next 10 years so in this video we will discuss how exactly the jobs are going to be the jobs of the future is going to be in 2026 to 2046 now like we have seen in the it industry ai is causing a lot of layoff but at the same time in biotech and pharma industry ai is causing a lot of excitement also in the it industry there are too many developers too many it people that's why layoff is happening in the biotech and pharma industry there are less bioinformatics ai ml experts so the demand is going up now there are two approaches through which this can be fulfilled okay the first is we train biotech professionals about bioinformatics and artificial intelligence which we are doing it another approach is when we train it professionals biotech biology life science so that they can you know execute such projects now that is where the government sector comes so whatever will happen in the private sector is going to define the changes in the government sector so we'll look into that also as we move forward so first thing i told you we know that ai is the trend data driven trend is there data driven roles will be there for example bioinformatics specialist computational biology engineers ai in drug discovery leaders that is where fast growing careers will be and every company in the biotech and pharma is now trying to position themselves as a tech bio company let me give you example of dotmatrix i'm sure most of you have now never heard of that company because it's not from uh, our country but dotmatrix has done something so huge that siemens which is one of the largest electronics company they bought it for 5.1 billion dollars and now they are trying to create a body double okay a digital clone of your body now imagine this happening right who will do who will work on all of this computational biologist bioinformatics it engineers who have a very good understanding of bioinformatics right so rather i should say health engineers because it's health plus engineers right so that is where ai and data driven roles is going to explode in the next 10 years it's already doing happening the next 10 years is going to happen now in genomics also there is research genomics and then there is consumer genomics so research genomics is where things are moving a little slower but the consumer genomics or diagnostic genomics is where things are moving very fast it's it's exploding and companies like strand life sciences med genome are making a lot of money so that is also one direction which we can go now the next trend which is there which is going to grow in the next 10 years is undoubtedly gene therapy and cell therapy so gene and cell therapy is very important it is rapidly growing its roles is tied to the manufacturing regulations and commercialization of genes and cell therapies now from gene therapy manufacturing specialists to process engineers and clinical trial specialist everywhere you will see gene therapy engineers in demand now having said that if we are looking at data driven research and uh, gene and cell therapy taking off only reason why government will not sit behind is because all this can be really dangerous right so that is where regulatory affairs and compliance will come into picture 
government will keep coming with new rules for every such new technology for preventing its misuse and that means the demand for regulatory affairs professional and compliance will shoot up so everything is connected like i told you in the beginning of the video right so aiml is creating a lot of ripple effect across the industry so is gene therapy but that is where ethics comes into picture that is where government comes into picture that unethical use of these technology should not happen that is where regulation will come compliance will come so regulatory affairs and compliance because pharma and biotech is heavily regulated sectors right all the companies and uh, everybody has to follow the rules if they don't people die right so yes regulatory affairs demand is going to go up next is bioprocess and manufacturing so bioprocess engineers are going to be in demand scale up expert because see what you did in the lab see first you do it in the software then you do it in a lab then both are successful then you want to scale it up right i know a lot of biotech companies they're able to create the product in the lab but when it comes to create millions of copies of that product to sell in the market they are failing right some of them are succeeding right so what's going wrong is they need bioprocess engineers they need scale up experts they need specialist in bio manufacturing automation and that will see most of the opportunities especially companies will expand into biologics vaccines novel molecule products production and that is where you will be in demand so bioprocess is one big field now having said that there's one more interesting field which is somewhat attached to aiml and that is protein engineer designing new proteins okay now if you have interest in RNA, DNA, mRNA, and all of that, and uh, you know, designing proteins. This is an amazing sector because everything depends on protein. So the entire cell is dependent on protein. So this is another job where you can get in. Now that is where let's understand and analyze the private sector. See, the private sector of developing countries will try to copy the products of the developed countries because they can't think one step beyond that. Most of them. So what they'll do? They will. The moment a patent is expiring, they'll create a biosimilar or uh, some copycat, sell it in the market. So they will be mostly focused in that. While the Western biotech and pharma companies, they will be interested in working on AIML, data, genomics, proteomics, protein engineering, bioprocess, all of that, right? So the private sector can be easily divided into two parts: the private sector of India. or developing countries will focus only on biosimilars and generics while the private sector of across the globe that is western countries they'll focus on novel therapies there will be more pockets like how we have boston cambridge bangalore san diego basel all these are the dominating pockets of biotech right more such pockets will come where hybrid roles will come where you can work from home and work and you don't get a job and by the way another very interesting uh, private sector trend you will see is clinical research because the more drugs which will come whether it is biosimilar generic or new drug designed by ai all of this that has to go through clinical research so clinical research jobs is going to explode across the globe same with clinical data management same with global regulatory affairs same with all the regulation based like patent agent and all of that is going to explode now my question to you is don't jump in because i told you jump into any of these sector in private only if you have interest and how do you find your interest is by reading more about it go google it out you know ask chat gpt and if you find it interesting okay then only you jump so there are four criteria you have to keep in mind first is of course the trends which i told you of course any of these the second will be do you find it interesting Right, let me know in the comment section which one you find interesting i'll make more detailed video on that right the third would be will it grow in the future right and number 4 will be will it give me a lot of money right so these four things any sector is fulfilling then you should jump in right now ai ml bioinformatics doesn't require a lot of investment all you need is a laptop and some skill set which you can learn in biotechnica so it is a transferable skill it is a easy to learn but can do a lot of things so that is a scalable skill right so a scalable skill helps you get a job faster and fulfills all the four criteria but you should have interest so government sector what will happen 
more of regulations is going to come to FDA, CDSCO, EMA, all these agencies, what they'll do? They will hire more global regulatory affairs experts. So learning and gaining experience in global regulatory affairs is a good idea right now because that is where all the government jobs will go, right? With more AIML coming, if you become a dominant ethics in AIML in biology, government will hire you as a consultant or a full-time employee. So that's where the emerging takeaways is going to be expect continuous expansion in partnerships between large pharmaceutical companies and small startups. This will fuel a lot of biotech innovation, a lot of new companies will come up. So a professional who has hybrid skills. So what do you mean by hybrid skills? Somebody who has wet lab as well as dry lab skills. Somebody who knows regulatory affairs, somebody knows uh, you know good manufacturing practices, good lab practice. So you know you have to be the Swiss army knife of biotech sector so that whatever job comes you can pick it up. So you have to uh, know all the knowledge which can be commercialized like bioprocess engineering right so because there's global competition and the future belongs to computational biologists and bioinformaticians a lot of companies are giving higher salary recently there was a interview by uh, Mark Zuckerberg and he says in the, that podcast that I will rather you know spend 500 billion dollars in AI than to be left out even if it is a bubble it's okay because he knows how important AI is. AI is the game-changing technology which has never come in last thousand years I, also I can say. The first was wheel and fire and third is AI. Okay, When the humanity designed a wheel, you can see mobility, right? When humanity designed fire, we can cook, we can you know, create. But when humanity designed AI, it's bigger than the internet, it's bigger than any of it, right? And before the artificial general intelligence comes in, if you become an expert, you'll be able to use it to your advantage. And that is where no denying fact. Okay, so that's all about uh, today's video. But see, there are a lot of unanswered questions. It's, is it going to be only AI? Is it going to be AI in any all, all of this or all, any of this? So I'm going to give you a question which you have to answer. Which biotech role of the future you want to take up and why? Okay, let me know in the comment section. And if I like your comment, I'm going to make a special video for you. Okay, so this is about today's uh, analysis of trends and roles of the future in the biotech sector and the government sector. I hope you got a lot of insights, but remember, this is just the beginning. There's much more to come and trends can change. So if you want to know the latest trends, you have to subscribe to Biotechnica. All the best. Take care. Bye-bye.